Okay, so question nine is what is the orbital diagram for nitrogen? So I'm going to keep up my rules for electron configuration to help answer this question. And then I'll just make some room here. And to answer this question, we first need to find the electron configuration of nitrogen in order to write its orbital diagram. Okay, so to find the electron configuration, we first need to divide the periodic table into orbital sections, S, P, D, and F. And then starting from hydrogen, we move left to right across the periodic table, writing the row number and then the block letter. Once we get to the D block, which is shown here, the transition metals, we write the row number minus one, and once you get to the F block, it's the row number minus two, and then the block letter. And then it's also um, important to know that we write in order of increasing energy levels. So first, let's find nitrogen on the periodic table. It is found here, atomic number seven. Uh, so this means that there are seven protons in an atom of nitrogen. And also, when the atom is neutral, this means that no electrons have been added or removed. So we also have seven electrons. Uh, so this is ground state nitrogen. And we start from hydrogen. And we first write the row number, which is 1. And then the block letter, which is S. And then the superscripts uh, tell us how many electrons are in that orbital. So in the 1s orbital, there are two electrons. So we write 1s2. And then moving down to the next row, we have 2s2. And then moving over, we have 2p. And then count out how many electrons up to the nitrogen. So 1, 2, 3. So our final electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So now, when we need to write in our orbital diagram, we can show the different orbitals using these boxes. So this can be the 1s orbital. This is the 2s orbital. And the 2p orbital can house six electrons in total. So I'm just going to show three boxes. And now we just need to fill in our electrons. So in the 1s orbital, we write an electron uh, that is orientated spinning up, and then another spinning down. And then once we get to the 2s orbital, we do the same thing. And now in the 2p orbital, when we write our three electrons, we don't write it like this. We need to fill out everything first, and they all need to spin in the same direction before we start filling in all the arrows pointing down. So when we write out our three electrons in the 2p orbital, they're all going to be spinning up like this. Okay, so this is the orbital filling diagram for nitrogen. And there are three, uh, yep, these three electrons that are spinning up. So the junior tutor said that orbital diagrams are pictorial descriptions of the electrons in an atom. There are three rules that are useful in forming orbital diagrams. Offbow's principle states that each electron occupies the lowest energy orbital, and on the other hand, the Pauli exclusions principle states that only two electrons can fit in a single orbital. Lastly, Hund's rule states that the electrons go into different orbitals in the same sublevel before doubling up inside orbitals. 
The main purpose of the orbital diagram is to illustrate the quantum numbers in an electron configuration. In addition to listing the principal quantum number n and the subshell l, it, is also, it also shows all the different orientations and spin of each electron. Diagram shows the number of subshells by using boxes or lines or electrons. So 3 is used for P, 5 is used for D, and 7 for F. In each box, the spin of an electron is noted by using arrows. Up arrows mean half spin and down arrows mean negative half spin. Okay, so now we have a brief intro to nitrogen. And for the orbital diagram of nitrogen, we need to obey the off bows principle, all the exclusions principle, and the Hund's rule. Since this element has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p3, we can have the following orbital diagram. Okay, so this solution is correct.